What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I'm glad you decided to stop by, spend a couple of minutes here with me. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about something that uh, my father-in-law and I were talking about a couple of days ago. And honestly, it took me a lot longer to come to this realization uh, than he did because he's quite a bit older than I am. But um, basically what I want to talk about today is why you should not seek perfection. Uh, it's one of my character flaws. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Uh, you know, if there's, if I make too many mistakes or I say, uh, too many times on my videos and stuff like that, oftentimes I just delete them because I'm such a perfectionist that, uh, it can be quite frustrating. Uh, but more to what I was talking about with my father-in-law, it's like, you know, when you're doing projects on like a shed, you're building a shed or you're building a cabin, which we're going to talk about here in a little while, uh, on a different video. Um, in the past, I have been very uh, prone to seek perfection on those sorts of endeavors, right? And the problem with perfection is that it slows you way, way, way down. And I would argue that no house that is built in the United States of America today is perfect in any way. These people put these uh, stick and brick houses up all the time and they're nowhere near perfect. Many of the walls aren't square. They don't care. They're trying to get them up and built and then they still sell them for half a million dollars. So, um, and they stand up, they stand up to the test of time. If you continue to take care of those things. So in the past, I would have gotten hung up on a lot of different things that would have slowed me way, way down and prevented me from achieving my goal, my end goal because of perfection. So I wanted to warn you guys about that, that, you know, while, in some ways, in some industries, it's an excellent thing to have a an eye for perfection, you know. But on the other hand, when you're trying to do production level work and get stuff done in a timely fashion, you have to kind of throw perfection out the window. That's why, you know, in the construction industry, they'll they'll allow like a quarter inch, you know, per so many feet. It can be off up to like a quarter inch for however many feet that span is allowed, you know. So uh, if you seek perfection in something like that, then again, you will end up spending 10, 20, 30 times more time than you would have if you just went ahead and did it and accepted the fact that the two by fours you get at Lowe's and Home Depot uh, must come from the twistiest tree ever in nature. I'm sure you guys have seen that meme where it's like a tree like this and they're saying this is where uh, they harvest the Lowe's and Home Depot boards. And that makes a lot of sense because as soon as I buy them, you know, I shop for them, I sight them, I look at them, I do all this stuff to make sure that I get good wood. And then usually by the time I'm ready to do my project, you pick it up, uh, no matter how you store it, even if you sticker it, even if you stack it perfectly, you'll pick that same board up that was perfectly straight in the store, but by the time you're ready to use it, it's got a big curve in it, you know? And, you know, in the past, I might have went ahead and gone and bought some more boards just to make sure that, you know, I had straighter materials to work with off the start. But, you know, that's just one example, uh, whether that's automotive related. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this myself. You know, the uh, the show on, on YouTube that used to be on YouTube called Road Roadkill uh, with David Freiberger and Mike Finnegan is one of my favorite shows back in the day before they moved over to Motor Trend and put it behind a paywall. It used to be one of the best shows on YouTube. And uh, anyway, uh, one of the things that they kind of taught me is it's okay to drive a car that has rust holes in the sides of it. And, you know, and, and is, is literally on its last legs. So I've been thinking a lot about that with some of my projects and stuff in, you know, in the past, like with my Monte Carlo. The whole reason that I pulled the engine out of my 72 Monte Carlo was because I was afraid that as I was driving it on these roads and stuff, they're so beat up that I was actually just doing more and more wear to the thing uh, by keeping it on the road. Although that was a mistake. Of course, back then I thought I'd be able to have the time or make the time, come up with the money that was going to be necessary uh, to do a full frame off restoration on that thing. Especially once I got my first shop built, uh, I thought I was in hog heaven. You know, I started to, you know, building up a tool base and all this, but the problem with that was, is I was so busy working overtime all the time that by the time I got home, uh, you know, and spent time with my wife and my kid, I had no time for doing that sort of stuff, except for on weekends. And I certainly didn't have the money for it. So, uh, what I should have done in hindsight is left the engine in that thing and just continue to drive it and, and worked on it a little bit here and a little bit there as I got time to do it. 
Uh, but you know, I was young, I was ambitious. I had a cherry picker, you know, I enjoy, I still enjoy pulling engines and installing engines and vehicles. But, you know, again, I just wanted to warn you about this guys, especially when we're younger and we're getting into stuff, you know, and I get it. You don't want to make mistakes. It's almost not worth it. You don't want to do something wrong. Uh, so you do want to do your research and try to do things right. But again, seeking perfection is not going to suit you well. You will not get a lot of your projects done if you're holding them to the level of perfection. So as I've gotten older, I'm almost 49. Next month, I'll be 49 years old. As I've gotten older, I'm seeing things in a little bit different way. You know, in the past, whenever I would do stuff and my wife would be like, man, why does it take you two or three times longer than it would take anybody else to do this job. And I'm like, well, because I'm trying to do the damn thing perfect and right the first time. And that has been a big part of my problem uh, growing up. And now that I'm older, you know, and, and let me let me explain this. Let me preface this. The reason that I did it that way was because I thought, you know, I want this thing, whatever this thing is, I want it to last the rest of my life and I never want to have to mess with it again. So I'm going to do it right one time perfectly and get it done with, right? And again, that might have been an okay mentality. It got me to where I am, and it made me always strive for better and better and better alternatives and, and methods and things like that to achieve the same goal. But what I'm trying to tell you is now that I'm 49 years old, I see that, you know, most likely I've already lived half of my life. So whatever I build, whether that be a cabin or a house or restoring my 72 Monte Carlo or doing all those sorts of things, the bar has been lowered because the rest of my life isn't as long as the first half of my life now. So I would imagine unless something comes along and, you know, I, maybe somehow I slip through the cracks and make it to be 105 years old. I doubt it. I doubt it because of the lifestyle that I've lived and things like that. Uh, you know, if I get out of my 70s, I think I'm doing pretty well. So you know, that being said, I'm 49, almost 50. That means I've only got, you know, 20 or 30 more years left here on this planet uh, to not only achieve my goals, but to live in those goals. And, you know, over here, if you don't know, uh, you know, I, I've got to assume that you've never watched one of my videos before. If you don't know anything about me, I'm a mechanic. Uh, I've got my own hundred acre land. That's where we are right now. I've got a hundred acres of land that I'm trying to develop. It's pretty much raw land, but I'm trying to develop it so that my wife and I can move over here before we retire and die, right? That's the goal. And I'd like to get over here way before retirement age. I'd like to be over here right now. I'd like to be living here at this location right now. But again, you can't rush the stuff either. And you know, when I say these things about perfection and not trying to seek or holding yourself to that high of a bar, I also don't mean do it in such a crappy way that, you know, you wish you hadn't have done it or you have to end up doing it over again. You still want to do it good enough, right? That's the thing that I seek now. There's my dog, Chloe, back there. That's the thing I seek now is good enough, right? I don't have to make something that's going to be a hundred year building because I'm not going to be living for another hundred years. And so far, my child, uh, you know, I only had one kid, my wife and I. And it's, it, she's a female, so uh, she's not that interested in my land out here. So most likely, once my wife and I pass from this earth, you know, no one in the family, unless things change between now and then, no one in the family is going to be interested in this. So this is our thing only. And so, again, I want to achieve my goals in a timely fashion. So if I seek perfection and I insist on perfection at every turn, I'll never get this done. On the other hand, if I'm willing to make some compromises uh, and not, not necessarily have perfection, but not have, you know, crappy work either, I want, you know, upper level work still. I still want the good stuff, but I don't want to sit around worrying about perfection. So I hope I've given you guys something to chew on here. This is something my father-in-law and I were talking about the other day, and it just hit me like an epiphany. Now that I'm older, I don't think about projects and, you know, especially big projects and stuff like that the same way. I think sometimes good enough is good enough for the time that you have while you're here on this earth. And of course, the real, the realism or the uh, realist inside of me knows that no matter what, I mean, I could be walking back to the truck after I turn the video off and drop dead from a heart attack. So none of us knows, you know, how we're going to get out of this thing, right? But we all know 
that we don't get out of it alive. So I advise you, uh, maybe hopefully as an older person, talking to someone that's younger that's getting into prepping and stuff like that, don't get hung up on the perfection. It'll be okay if it's good enough. It'll not only be okay, it'll be good enough that you'll never have to redo it again. If you use the right materials, follow the right practices, all that sort of stuff, you still have to do your research, especially on something that you don't know a lot about. But I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying turn your back on all that. No, but what I'm saying is if something's a quarter inch off, you can't beat yourself up about it. You just have to roll with the punches and get the come along out to make that wall go where to where you want it to go, right? Uh, you know, I, and again, back to my old 72 Monte Carlo. You know, I regret that that thing has been sitting there static for the last 20 years since I pulled that engine out. And, you know, I, the good news is I never sold it. I've been offered money many times and I've thought about it a few times uh, because, again, my lifestyle has changed the, the direction. You know, when I bought that Monte Carlo, I was living in the city. I was in high school. I was living in my mom and dad's house still. You know, it was a long time ago, man. Uh, and I was driving on city streets. Well, now I'm out here in the country and I drive on gravel roads. I mostly need a pickup truck, a Monte Carlo, a 72 low slung uh, car like that is not ideal for the conditions that I'm in right now. But at the same time, I'm not going to give it up. I want to drive it on the gravel roads like the General Lee. And if you don't know, it's kind of bright orange, that same color as the General Lee, even though it's a Chevrolet. It's still one of the things that uh, attracted me to that car. It just looks fast when it's sitting still. And anyway, uh, I'm going to get that thing going. And I've decided I'm not going to be perfect about it. You know, and, and honestly, that's another factor. I'm not trying to, I, who are you building the thing for? If you're building it for someone else, then you do need to like, uh, try a little harder, seek a little bit more of a perfect situation, right? Uh, if you're building something that's going to have like the white glove treatment, like a car, and you're going to take it into some, you know, major auction or something, and they're going to check and see if the brake master cylinder is factory original, then yeah, in that kind of a case, if you're building a factory original car and it has to be perfect, then, you know, there are some instances where perfection is still required is what I'm trying to say. But for a vehicle you're just going to have and drive yourself, you'll never sell, you never see yourself selling, just fix the damn thing up. Get it running, get it driving, get it on the road. Even if it doesn't drive all that great, get it on the road. Then you'll be able to pull it into your shop or your garage or your driveway and work on it when and, you know, at the time that you have available to work on it. So anyway, guys, just wanted to make a quick one here about perfection and how it's not a perfect world. You're not a perfect person, neither am I. And so um, maybe, the, maybe the best answer is, you know, strive for perfection, but don't get hung up on it when you don't reach the, you know, you don't hit the bar, right? I mean, it's going to happen over and over and over. Always, as always, the best saying I've ever heard that applies to everybody's life is shit happens. You can have the best plans in the world, the most perfect plan laid out and then something else unforeseen happens and wrecks the whole thing. So don't get hung up on perfection. Be yourself. Uh, do the job. Do it right. Do it good enough. But don't let yourself uh, mentally talk yourself out of even starting the project because you seek perfection to such a level that you won't even start the project. And, you know, and again, that's what I'm speaking from personal experience. So just something to chew on. Again, I'm not saying do shit in a crappy way. I'm saying still do it a great way, but just maybe not to the same level that, at least for me personally, I don't worry about it. I don't sit there and lose sleep over it if one little thing is off or if I forgot to put a screw on something or if whatever, right? I mean, unless it's something critical, that wouldn't really even matter, you know? So Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. Have you found this to be the case in your life as well? This is something that I didn't expect. I've always been a perfectionist. And as I've gotten older and closer and closer to 50, I'm like, you know, perfection just isn't that important to me anymore. I just want to get the job done right the first time, one time. I want to be one and done still, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to let something like striving for perfection stop me from doing the job. So, Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Have you discovered that as you've gotten older, uh, that you don't seek perfection at the same level? It was just something that I thought was really interesting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. As always, I stand for liberty to the bitter end. I hope you do too.